Really, I've just yeah. got here. I don't know what's happening. Hold on, no, don't tell me anything. Stand up. I need to tell you that you're under arrest for attempted murder. You don't have to say anything that may be in defense if you do not I... mention. When questioned, which later on in court, what? anything that you do say may be given in evidence. What? Do you understand? We're acting on what we know at the minute, yeah, what we think we know. Okay. Please, okay. just bear in mind you're under caution. Okay. We think we know. Okay. Please, okay. just bear in mind you're under caution. Okay. This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story I've already covered before. And now the trial has been concluded and a woman has been found guilty, but not for what she was initially charged for. Kaylee Mahood was charged for the murder of Mr. Oliver O'Toole. But on the 21st of January 2022, and the judge decided that she should only stand trial for manslaughter. The 30-year-old had stabbed her partner in the chest in their home on Ross Liston Road in Burton on July the 25th last year. Oliver suffered several stab wounds and when Hayley was arrested and charged, she said that she'd done this in self-defence. There was a two-week trial that took place at Stafford Crown Court and during the trial they heard the details about the relationship between the former boxer and the mother of one. Haley's defence was that the boxer would regularly hit her and slap her during arguments and on occasion knocked her clean out in the kitchen. She also admitted to retaliating on several occasions and injuring him with a glass and stabbing him in the side. She said this was when he was trying to strangle her and giving evidence at Stafford Crown Court during her trial. She said that right before Mr O'Toole's death, she said they had been drinking, snorting cocaine and also taking cannabis. She referred to the following morning and they heard in court that she woke up at 10.30am and she went downstairs into the living room. Her two-year-old daughter and Ollie were there and Ollie was on the sofa and he was still drunk and he was standoffish. When I walked into the room, there was a bottle of whiskey in the cabinet and this had been full when I'd gone to sleep. And I said, look at the state of you. I thought, oh great, another Sunday of this. So in the courtroom, she accused Ali of drinking too much and also being violent. She went on to say during her evidence that I picked up our youngest daughter and took her upstairs. The house was a mess and I didn't want her down there. And she said that we had a verbal argument and I went upstairs. He shouted something at me. I responded and he didn't like it. She said that he then punched her three times when they was in the house in front of their youngest daughter. And her daughter, she said, was hysterical. Haley then told the court that she went downstairs to leave the house and Mr O'Toole followed her. She said before I could get out of the house, he grabbed me around the throat. Haley went to the front door, she said, and her neighbour, who is also her friend, Rebecca Worth, tried to clean up the wound that she had suffered. There was blood from her eye. She went back to the house before the murder and said she wanted to get her child and some nappies. She said Ollie was in the living room at this point and I walked past him, she said, and he got up and overtook me, went to the kitchen and said, if you leave the house, I'm going to kill you, you slag. I said something like I'm going for good and he came out of the kitchen at me. I backed away and ended up being by the nearby cooker that we kept in the dining room. I saw a knife on the cooker and I picked it up in my left hand as he came towards me. She said that she tried to move away and he continued to get closer and she lashed out, resulting in the knife wound to his chest. He backed off and I went towards the kitchen and left immediately. When her solicitor harassed her during cross-examination, how she grabbed the knife and stabbed Mr O'Toole, she said that it happened so fast. It was a swift reaction. I thought he was coming my way. My emotion was panic. I didn't realise I caused him a serious injury and I went back to my friends, totally unaware. The court had been told that Haley had walked past Oliver while he was crawling back to the house after being stabbed. She had then gone back to her friend's house, who was nearby. It was Miss Worth, her friend, who had dialed 999 and said that her partner had seen Mr O'Toole covered in blood. The court said that Haley was reluctant to speak to the ambulance service and the defendant was heard to say that I'm not hanging around here for police and social services. By the time that paramedics arrived, Mr O'Toole had gone into cardiac arrest and Haley had said that she felt shock, horror, sadness and pain. 
and she returned to the scene when she was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and taken away in handcuffs. She told bystanders that Oliver had wounded himself and told police that she had, nearly fr she had only thrown the knife in his general direction and she didn't know that he was wounded. She changed her story several times during the trial, but today she was actually still found guilty of only manslaughter. The prosecution and the defence agreed that the relationship was violent and what we would describe as toxic. Throughout the trial, Haley was sobbing uncontrollably and when she was asked whether she meant to kill him, she said, no, not for one second. I just wanted him to get away from me. Haley had also said there were several different examples of them assaulting each other and she had threw cups and also been violent herself. The court had heard about Haley's background and said that she was 18 when she had her first daughter and the defendant said that she split up with the child's dad when she was 25, partially because he was using MCAT, heroin and crack cocaine. She admitted using MCAT with him and also trying crack, but she said that she never touched heroin. When the relationship ended, she went to a woman's refuge and before moving into the house, she would go to share with Mr O'Toole. She said she moved in right away when she met Mr. O'Toole and she fell pregnant with their daughter soon afterwards. They also had a staff at Rock Rider Cross called Ziggy, who appeared fearsome but was not and coward when the couple argued. It was revealed in court that Oliver was working as a roofer at the time and he'd previously been a boxer. And Haley was unemployed and receiving housing benefit, child benefit, and also universal credit. Oliver had paid for mainly everything inside the house, and Oliver's money was mainly spent on alcohol and weekends. A lot of what Haley said in the trial was contradicted by what Oliver's friends said. They painted a picture that she was violent, very violent, and this happened on many occasions, and there was witnesses to this violence as well. The police also obtained text messages between the couple that highlighted how bad the relationship was and how toxic it had become. A forensic scientist called Daniel Beaumont attended the scene of the death to analyse blood patterns and also samples. Haley's blood was found on the stairs and also the bathroom and Oliver's blood was found at the front door, downstairs and the back garden. The blood splatter analyst said that some of the stains downstairs were Mr O'Toole's and they were consistent with the blood spurting from a wound. Haley was trying to argue that she had stabbed him in self-defence. The judge ordered that the jury could only find her guilty of manslaughter. So this story definitely highlights how it's the children that suffer at the end of the day. They've lost their mother, they've lost their father and they've also witnessed a lot of this as well. The bad relationships, the arguing, the constant bad tensions. Also when two people have bad habits as well like drinking too often or drugs always make it even worse because this leads to arguments through lack of money or various different reasons. And it also shows how complicated the legal system really is as well where you can originally be arrested for murder and later on a judge orders that you can't be convicted of this crime. And this is also another reason why you have to be so careful to avoid saying anything if somebody's, if the case changes later on in the trial. So I really appreciate you joining me for this story and my condolences to the family of Oliver and the children of the pair as well. Because I'm sure they're going to have a lot of questions as they're growing up as to what happened. So really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me online as well at Scar City Studios on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.